All right, so we're seeing a full-fledged attack on our traveling rights. The war on cars continues, and it's expanding. Now they're going after gas boilers. The way that people heat their houses and their buildings. There was an article they put out today in The Guardian saying, we need to expand ULEZ to buildings. And when you read it, it talks about gas boilers. So the media seems to be telegraphing that that's the next item under attack. Gas use in homes. And this lines up with the eugenicists' plan to reduce consumption, reduce energy use. And I think that's the best explanation for why we're seeing this. And we're also seeing a very strange development where governments around the world are pushing engine immobilizers. The governments in these cases are using the excuse that these engine immobilizers will help prevent car thefts. But it's very suspicious, these same evil governments that we've seen do tyrannical act after tyrannical act are now pushing people to put engine immobilizers that can be accessed by the police. And so I see a number of red flags there, obviously. We'll talk about those. I think this is obviously more about gaining the ability to shut off the cars of the non-compliant. So we have a lot to talk about. One of the major stories is the war between the police and the Blade Runners, which are the UK residents who are sick of this US tyranny and are tearing down these surveillance cameras. They are a populist movement that has the support of the people. This is an extremely unpopular policy that's being rolled out. It's basically class warfare in broad daylight. Finding people 12 and a half pounds for driving a car anywhere in London. Finding people 100 pounds if they drive a truck. Finding people 90 pounds if they drive a diesel car. Absolutely sick. Well, the latest development is that the Met Police have just launched what they're calling Operation Aramon, and they've vowed to destroy the freedom fighters of the anti ulez resistance. So we keep seeing photos and videos of people tearing down these cameras all across London. Here are some more photos. London Commuter on Twitter says, well, this ULEZ camera lasted long. What a total waste of money. Here's another two photos. Chislehurst, the ULEZ camera. Sixth camera lasts less than one week. The latest camera to appear has not so much been snipped as pulverized. And here are some photos of that. Here's a photo from Sandra Whedon on Twitter. ULEZ camera up on Friday night by Sunday at 10 a.m. gone. And you can see that up here, the snipped wire, the missing camera. The Blade Runners are also putting up signage like this one. Warning, this area is patrolled by Blade Runners. Any ULEZ camera or associated signs installed here will be retired on site. It reads, they're not messing around. Now I've read some talk about some communities in London barring this scheme and not allowing cameras or signs to be posted in regards to ULEZ. But here's an example of where they're putting these cameras up anyway, despite what they claimed. Andy Scott on Twitter says, interested to know what these camera poles are all about on both sides of the road in Epping High Street, as I thought we weren't allowing ULEZ cameras. So maybe it's something else, but very suspicious. Now this is really concerning too, in an official document, the transport strategy. Sadiq Khan, the mayor of London, here is quoted as saying, quote, at its heart is a bold aim for 80% of all trips in London to be made on foot, by cycle, or by using public transport by 2041. So they are just decimating the ability for the British to make a living. I have a concerning hunch that the price of living is going to explode as a result of these policies and policies like them. So all the cameras are being ripped down. The Blade Runner group has vowed to tear down every single ULEZ camera. So what are the police doing in response? Well, they just announced the launching of Operation Aramon. This is on a website called lbc.co.uk. Quote, we have been proactively targeting those we suspect of causing or seeking to cause damage. We have been proactively targeting. What the hell does that mean? Are they just stalking people? Even people seeking to cause damage. So this is total pre-crime, thought crime. I wonder if they're monitoring social media. This really begs a lot of questions as to what they mean by this. We have been proactively targeting those we suspect of causing or seeking to cause damage. Quote, we are carrying out a thorough investigation. And this includes gathering CCTV, speaking to potential witnesses, and following up on active leads. So this is a major development, although this is kind of what the police have been saying for weeks now. But they're saying they're launching a full-fledged operation to proactively target people who may seek to damage these cameras. Wow. So we'll be covering all of those stories and more, but first I want to give a big thank you to our valued sponsor for today's video, Traction Uranium. You can learn about their company and their exciting projects at tractionuranium.com. Traction specializes in uranium exploration and mining, and they're headquartered in Canada, 
with numerous high-value state-of-the-art mining operations across the country. Traction Uranium trades on numerous markets, and you can find them trading in the United States with the stock ticker TRCTF. One of Traction Uranium's top mining sites is called Key Lake South in Saskatchewan. It's a massive 1,794 hectare property where they mine for uranium, rare earth metals, nickel, and cobalt. So not financial advice, but it's interesting to note the stock is trading at around 24 cents, which is a multi-year low. The last time it traded this low, shares rallied 123% in just five weeks. And also the company is scheduled and excited to begin a major exploration project. The site is in a region called the Anthabasca Basin, which boosts extremely high quality uranium deposits with purity 10 times the international average. Traction Uranium has a great leadership team and tons of experience in uranium mining. And they've even developed their own in-house uranium vectoring technique that they use in their field operations. You can find more about this exciting company and their presentation on their website, tractionuranium.com, with tons more details about their mining sites and operations. So a huge thank you to Traction Uranium for sponsoring independent journalism. Again, their website is tractionuranium.com and their shares are traded under the ticker TRCTF. Now back to the show. So turning back to the U.S. situation, it's a very tense moment in Britain. The Met Police have announced they're launching a new operation, Operation Aramon, to go after the people taking down these evil cameras. But all of these threats from the police and all the high-tech surveillance doesn't seem to be deterring people from tearing down the cameras. Now, a very concerning development is the war on boilers. I saw a lot of people sharing this article on Twitter. I keep an eye on the U.S. news. And I was very concerned to see people sharing this. I saw this idea getting a signal boost. It seems like a lot of these pro-government eco-fascists were sharing this. Like, oh yeah, we got to move on to buildings. Look at this. This is from The Guardian. U.S. just the start. And a similar scheme needed for buildings. Experts warn. Lowering pollution produced by houses, offices, and factories is just as crucial as tackling vehicle emissions, it says. So you give them an inch, they take a mile. And if you don't give them an inch, they take a mile as well. This is absolutely infuriating, and it matches what we're seeing around the world. Many places are banning gas. Cars that run off gas. Gas boilers. Gas appliances. And here's the crux of what they're pushing. About half of all of the nitrogen dioxide that pollutes central London actually comes from buildings and not from vehicles. And while we are taking measures to improve pollution from cars, buses, and lorries, we are not yet tackling those produced by houses, offices, and factories, said Lewis. So this is so obvious it's about reducing consumption. They're using the same nitrogen excuse to go after farming in many places around the world. This is outrageous. They're just going to keep invoking the environment to do whatever they want. They're going to continue to strong arm us if we let them. They're going to appeal to the greater good while they wreak so much havoc on the greater population. This is why it's so important to resist the ULEZ. They're never going to stop. They will never stop. You can't comply your way out of tyranny. And we really shouldn't negotiate with these madmen terrorists. So we're getting more and more calls to ban gas usage, gas boilers, gas cars. But they don't have a good alternative. This is going to cost people so much money in fines, in forced equipment that people have to buy. Here's a headline from The Express. Heat pump warning over staggering hitting cost to UK households of gas boiler alternative. Quote, a heat pump will cost you more to run using its average efficiency compared to a gas boiler and its average efficiency. You'd have to pay as much as 13,000 pounds up front for the privilege of having a system that costs you more each year to operate. And so you might be wondering, what is this gas boiler thing that they're attacking? Basically, it's people's heating appliances. Heated water and air. That's what's under attack here. This is major. And we're seeing similar moves across the world. Here's Germany. New gas boilers will be outlawed in Germany starting January 1st, 2024. Here's a headline from Financial Times. Outraged and furious, Germans rebel against gas boiler ban. Here's The Guardian, which is funded by Bill Gates, pinning the resistance to this on the gas boiler lobby. <laughs> the gas boiler lobby. Just like in New York, when they rolled out the congestion pricing, they blamed all the resistance on the car lobby. When it's people just trying to go to work, trying to heat their homes, that's where the resistance is. People are pissed, and rightfully so. Here's Agent 131711 on Twitter. 
I watch the recall list daily, and I've noticed a trend in gas appliances being recalled suddenly. Here's today's newest recalls, gas-powered hot water heaters and laundry washers and dryers. So a recall of residential boilers powered by gas due to a carbon monoxide risk. Now, are they actually protecting people? Or is that yet another piece in the war on the boiler? We're also seeing this in the United States. This is the Houston Chronicle. Fight over gas stoves rages as Congress debates new energy standards. So the Federal Safety Commissioner proposed a ban on gas stoves. We're going to see this continue to evolve. We need to resist this. Ecofascism may be the death of us all if we don't. We covered this the other day. Victoria, Australia is banning gas connections to new homes starting in 2024. Do you see a pattern? They're using the climate as an excuse to enact tyranny. Meanwhile, the ill effects of this extortion racket are being felt across London. Here's a headline from the Express. Drivers left suicidal as elderly become prisoners over Sadiq Khan's ULEZ scheme. And the article points out that if you drive every day, that's 375 pounds per month, just on the extortion racket called ULEZ. This is disgusting. Oh, and by the way, MPs don't have to pay their ULEZ congestion fines. They just claim it as an expense. Here's Layla Morin. 105 pounds for MP travel. Congestion charge and toll congestion charge. And this scheme is expanding and metastasizing, not just to all of London, but we're seeing it spread across the United Kingdom. Tyneside, Bradford, Sheffield, London, Portsmouth, Bath, Bristol, Birmingham, Greater Manchester are popping up on the map with similar schemes. This is eco-fascism, where they're trying to use the excuse of the greater good, collective rights, to go after human rights and our ability to consume as we please. This is despicable. We're also seeing the low emission zone, and we also have major news in Glasgow, Scotland. Look at these fines they're dishing out for their low emission zone. The initial penalty is 60 pounds, and this will double for each subsequent breach detected. This is being reported by Fleet News, and they say this caps at 480 pounds for cars and LGVs, and 960 pounds for buses and HGVs. This is Fleet News, older vehicles banned from Glasgow as low emission zone launches. It says a vehicle can only drive within the Glasgow low emission zone if it meets the specified emission standards. Wow. When a non-compliant vehicle is detected in the zone, a penalty charge notice will be issued to the registered keeper. Look at these fines. This is absolutely insane. The initial penalty charge of 60 pounds will double for each subsequent breach detected. Automatic number plate recognition cameras linked to a national vehicle licensing database will be used to enforce Glasgow's low emission zone. This is insane. So 60 pounds the first time you drive into the zone, then it doubles. So I don't know if this resets every day, but they say the initial penalty is 60 pounds. And then each quote subsequent breach doubles that. And it says it caps at 480 pounds. This must be daily. This must be daily. 60 pounds, and then you have to go back in, and that's 120 pounds. These types of schemes are going to have such an impact on everything. What is this going to do to ride sharing? Services like Uber and Lyft. $480 a day? And this racks up really quick. The first time you drive through 60 pounds. The next time you drive through 120 pounds. Then 240 pounds. And then on the fourth time, 480 pounds. And then after 500 pounds, you can just drive around as much as you want until the next day. I mean, this is so evil. And I think they're going to continue expanding and expanding and expanding. We're also seeing the spread to New York. Congestion pricing is coming to New York City. That's a CNN headline. So look at what they're doing in New York with this congestion pricing. They're talking about charging cars $23 during peak times. So I'd imagine that's a rush hour during the weekdays. So they want to find as many workers as possible. There's a reason it's crowded because people need to use the roads. And now they're just going to fine people $23 to do so. It's just scheme after scheme after scheme. We were talking the other day how they lowered the speed limit in London in many places to 20 miles per hour, set up automated AI speed traps, and started mailing people exorbitant fines. Very high fines, hundreds and hundreds of dollars. 
for small speeding infractions in this newly lowered slow zone. And this is spreading all the way to Australia. Look at this from Melbourne. This is Nine News. Cars could be banned for Melbourne's CBD, which is the Central Business District, during peak hour. This is being proposed in the council. Cars could soon be banned from parts of Melbourne's Central Business District. Look at this map here. Close to cars, open to cars. And I worry that all of these schemes will just get worse and worse and worse and worse. There are also some very concerning announcements coming out of Liverpool. Map of Liverpool could be divided up into 13 neighborhoods in major change. This is a Liverpool echo. A complete reset of how the council works. So a lot of people are concerned that this has to do with Agenda 2030 and the eco-fascism that we're seeing around the world. I'm wondering if this is some sort of a divide and conquer strategy to make people more controllable. We've seen previous schemes where they make people confined to their zone. So maybe that's what this will be. Fined for crossing the borders between these neighborhoods. I'm not sure, but we'll keep an eye on that. And here's another scheme. Look at this. Residents forced to sell their cars after being charged 2.2 thousand pounds to park near their homes. This is on the Mears website. So a parking firm scrapped residents' annual permit passes and the parking fees are being raised. And people are having to change their lives because of this. That's insane. And then we have this nonsense. drive throughs are under attack. Look at this headline from CNN. drive throughs are creating problems for cities and towns. And they call them magnets of congestion. This term that keeps getting thrown around. Here's another article from Odyssey. Major cities introduce bills that will ban new drive through restaurants. Here are two quotes from the article. The belief is the congestion created by drive throughs discourages walking, public transit use, and visits to neighboring businesses. They also believe that their existence leads to accidents with pedestrians, cyclists, and other cars, and contradict the environmental goals and the livability of many communities. Absolute nonsense. Officials from Minneapolis, Fairhaven, New Jersey, Creve Coeur, Missouri, Orchard Park, New York, are amongst other cities who echo these sentiments and have banned new drive throughs in recent years. This is so obviously a concerted attack on traveling and on human freedom. This is crazy too. Look at this headline. TikToker visits only American town where cars are banned. Quote, this is what life should be. It's just so obvious to see what they're trying to do with these headlines. They're trying to sell people on their own enslavement, their own shackles. Here's another headline from Manchester. This is BBC. Angry residents back calls to ban Manchester pavement parking. And here's a website called Bristol 24-7. Petition to ban pavement parking gains momentum. They claim they've gotten over a thousand signatures. We don't want people to have the ability to park their cars by their house. And then look at this. This is the headline from the mirror. Non-London driver racks up 900 pounds in ULES fines after his number plate was cloned. So now people have to worry that somebody clones their plate and they get automatically fined for something they never did. But thankfully, so many people are standing up and there are these huge protests across London recently. Here's a photo from one of these protests with the famous English yellow plaques. People are so pissed off about the ULES, and rightfully so. So this is interesting as well. In Australia, they're rolling out engine immobilizers. And they're saying that there are these car thefts. They're saying that there's a trend on TikTok where people have found their way around car security systems. And there have been a spate of car thefts. Now, something seems really fishy about this. And we're seeing this pushed around the world. Engine immobilizers. Which just sounds really suspicious when the government's saying, hey guys, we need to put devices into your car to protect your property because we can't actually go investigate these things and get justice for you. Now, we need to force you to put these engine immobilizers in your car. And the obvious thought is, well, is this because the government wants to be able to shut down people's cars who are not compliant? So I see this as yet another piece of this perfect storm that's brewing. And I expect them to roll this into some new regulation and then exploit this later once everybody has an engine immobilizer in their car because the government says it's costing us too much money to go track down these lost cars. So the police need to have a way to shut down engines if a car gets stolen or for other reasons, right? In their brochure that they have here on the screen, the solution to the Queensland car theft pandemic. And we can see a lot of news coverage on this. 20,000 vouchers are being handed out by the government. 
to help people get engine immobilizers installed into their car. What could go wrong? That's in Queensland, Australia. But we're seeing the same narrative across the world. Here's WBAL Baltimore TV. Car thefts increase across Baltimore amid worsening problem. Apparently there's something called Kia Challenge going on on TikTok. Amy says, so it sounds like the social credit score system and 15 minute city control to me. They can kill your engine. And I think she's right. That's good analysis. Nine News' tweet here. Senior police have labeled them game changers. And now the Queensland government is paying for engine immobilizers to be fitted to your car. And they're calling this a new trial of the devices. So think about where this is going to progress. And one last story I want to cover. I noticed this as well. And I think this ties into the overarching premise of today's show. The war on travel. New York Post ran this article. And I'm sure you've seen these types of scenes go viral. Wild airplane passenger meltdowns have soared to nearly 50% worldwide. Here's why. And I didn't actually read their article, but I noticed in the comments a very disturbing trend. I suspect these people are PSYOP agents, but look at the angle that was being pushed on Twitter. I think this is very suspicious. This person here says it's because of cheap tickets. The mob can afford to fly now. Oh, that's the problem, guys. Airplane travel is too cheap. Talk about ridiculous change agents on social media. Everyone, we need to raise the cost of flying so that people can't travel. It's so easy to see through this to me. Here's another person. Spirit, Frontier, and Southwest are all budget airlines. As a result, they're going to attract some trashy people. If flying were more expensive, you'd see less of this. This is not a direction that we want to go with more strict security. Klaus Schwab has pitched the idea of scanning people's brains to detect and ban people of malintent from getting on the plane or crossing borders. So I think this is a piece of the puzzle as well. So I'll leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments. This is crazy to me. A total onslaught using the climate as an excuse, using the greater good as an excuse to completely decimate the populations. Sick.